Hey everybody, welcome back to another Nature's Always Right episode with Stephen Cornett. Today we're going to be doing mushroom logs, all the inoculation process, how I do it very easily and expensively. Me and a friend can do about 50 of these mushroom logs per day working at a moderate pace. And each one of these mushroom logs will give you an incredible amount of food for a long period of time. It's a bit of work up front to create it but it's pretty inexpensive. It's mostly just your labor that you're investing into this. Each inch of diameter in one of these logs is gonna give you about one year of mushrooms. So this six or so inch diameter log, it's gonna give me at least six years of mushrooms. So it's an incredible opportunity for people to grow their own food that has a ton of nutrition and even do this as a business. I see this as a fantastic business opportunity. If you wanted to just come in and buy a couple acres of some heavily wooded with hardwood land that's really not usable by somebody other than like for logging or you could buy that very cheap cost and build out a mushroom business very quickly. If you wanna learn about how to get logs like this, how to select the trees, what mushrooms do I select uh, for what type of trees, all that is in my previous video on selecting the log, so be sure to check that one out. And I've also got another in-depth video that I did last year all about this process. So this will be my updated video and all my best tips and what I'm using to inoculate my mushroom logs. So first up here we have our spawn. I get all my spawn, my tools, all my setup here is from Field and Forest. They're in my opinion the best company to get your mushroom stuff from, not only because they're certified organic, They've been in the business uh, for a very long time. And they have great educational resources as well on their YouTube channel, their Instagram, and on their website. One thing I really love that they provide you with, with each strain, they tell you the spacing for the holes that you'll be drilling, um, any special notes maybe for that strain that you might wanna consider. You're of course gonna need a tool to drill the holes in where we're gonna put this sawdust spawn. If you're doing anything over 10, or if you wanna do any sort of sawdust spawn inoculation, I recommend just get their tool. It's super cheap, it's so easy. Rather than using your drill, you just need an angle grinder and this special attachment. I'll put links down in the description for the whole setup um, that I'm using. I use eyes and ears when I'm using this. This shoots wood everywhere, so you really wanna be sure to wear eye protection. And then you're gonna need some sort of inoculation tool that we'll use to get the sawdust. And I like the one that is the thumb press because it can be operated by one hand. There's another type that you hit. Um, I have found that this worked great and I can work all day long with my one thumb or if I can switch between left and right hand and I don't get tired. So I highly recommend this one for you guys. Once you've filled in, you're gonna need some type of wax. A paraffin wax is a great option for that. And then the only other thing that you're gonna need are your logs. So these logs have been sitting for two weeks to let that natural fungicide of the trees exit. And now we're ready to inoculate. So first step up here, let's go ahead and drill. We will be doing lion's mane. Lion's mane, the best wood is beech. I luckily had some beech. So for this, according to our instructions, we will space the holes every three to four inches and then there'll be about a two inch spacing between each row. And we're trying to create a diamond pattern, just like when we plant seedlings in the garden for the optimal spacing efficiency. So before you start, make sure that everything on here is very tight, the chuck is tight. You may wanna tighten this up every 15 or so logs, make sure it stays tight. I have had this slip out on me a little bit before, or it'll get stuck in the wood. So. Um, just a lot of vibration going on, so ensure that this chuck is remaining tight as you go. Be careful, don't get too close, because sometimes the, it'll skip a little bit and you would hate to have this thing hit your hand. So as you're drilling in this, if you do hit or go any, near any weird spots or bumps, that's where this could jump a little bit more. So just be careful, and I, I'm always trying to put my drill piece perpendicular to the face of the log and that helps me to stay safer as well. The professionals will have like a two by four setup with two caster wheels on each side so that you can just spin the log in place. And this works excellent for the drilling as well as the adding of the wax. So that's something else to look into if you wanna like scale this up and go faster. And when you're drilling holes and you're getting near the bottom here, Keep in mind that if your mushrooms get bigger, they're gonna grow out and then touch the ground. So something this year I've been doing is actually trying to stay a little bit further away than what I just did this hole. 
And you also don't get too crazy hard on yourself about making these perfect. If you do less holes, this log will last longer. If you do more holes, it'll create more fruit and you'll spin the log faster. So, um, you know, it takes probably a couple years to really get the hang of observing what happens and how the spacing works out well for each strain of mushroom that you're doing. So now we're moving on to the inoculation station and I wanted to give you a few buying tips to help you kind of decide, well, which spawn should I get? There's a lot of different options. What size, how many logs do I want to do? So this is a 2.5 pound bag of soda spawn. And I have found that this will do more than the 10 logs that they say it will. It'll do up to like 15, I have found. So they're very, Field and Forest is very generous with the spawn that they give you. I think that doing the sawdust spawn is the best. If you just wanna do 10 logs, then just get those plugs that you smash in with the hammer and use a drill. But if you wanna do more than 10, I just think it makes sense. And you think you're gonna do this more in the future, get the drill bit that I, for the angle grinder and get at least a 2.5 pound bag of the sawdust spawn. And it's just gonna be better for you. The sawdust spawn is way more effective than the plug spawn. It's just more guaranteed to have a big success, I think. So that's why I would just say, always go with this unless you really just wanna just do a few logs and just try it out. So what I like to do is I take a cardboard box, I put my plastic bag in there, I take my inoculation tool and I just break up the sawdust. And I noticed that the more the sawdust is broken up, the easier it goes into the tool really consistently. So what this tool does is makes a really uh, compound amount of the sawdust that to shove in the hole that we drilled. I found that smashing the tool in about four times gives me the perfect amount where it, it fits about flush. It's nice when this comes out to be compact. So if I push it down, I can't fit any more in and it's also flush with the outside. The reason I like it to be flush is that when you come and wax the top, it'll just seal it perfectly in there. If there's some sawdust on the edges, it can kind of mess up the wax seal a bit. So four punches and I push it in and that's basically perfect. Let's see if I do not enough. So I just did three. So with three, I'm able to push it down and now there's a bit of a gap there, which isn't the end of the world. A little bit of uh, gap below is nice because it really makes that wax seal it in there good. Now let's put in too much. What does that look like? So if I have too much, it's spilling out of the sides here. If I go to wax this, it's just not gonna come out nice. So if you do too much, you could press it down and then wipe over the top. And to speed this process up, what I've done is I know that four plungers is gonna be enough to make it basically perfect or have slightly overfill. So I'll do them all and then at the end, I just take my hand and I just do a quick wipe down of the log and that makes it flush so that when I go to wax it, it's perfectly even. Okay guys, so here's my super simple rice cooker setup. I just put a chunk of the wax in there. I turn it onto the cook setting and it melts it and it's perfect. It doesn't overheat the wax. So with my dabber, take off the excess and I just paint over the top and completely cover the sawdust till it's totally sealed in there. That's it, and I just do it for the whole log. And then it's a good idea when you finish to squeeze out all the wax so that you can use this thing multiple times. And now this will go in the back of my truck and then we'll take it over to my storage area. All right, so here we are in my mushroom area that I've set up with my A-frame style. So for now, these are just gonna sit here. These need to grow out um, before they can actually eventually fruit. So what I've found here in Tennessee with my first set of logs, I did them in winter. By the end of summer, early fall, I was getting shiitakes, oysters, olive oysterlings, and the chestnuts. I got all of them that quickly, which is a little bit faster than what Field and Forest says on their website. And I believe that's because of just the hot human environment that we have here in Tennessee is just really good for fungal growth, which I have witnessed throughout uh, living here in all the woods. So I expect to get some harvest off these the coming fall and then next year to have an even bigger harvest. So these are gonna sit here until, you know, maybe August or something. And I'll put them underneath some shade cloth to just keep the sun off them. I wanna make sure that these stay moist. And then I'll set up my new A-frame for them right about the time where they're gonna start fruiting. I'll put them out on an A-frame. Um, but until then, they don't need to take up a bunch of room. They can just sit here stacked uh, until I'm ready for them. One other consideration that some people do, but after talking to Field and Forest, I didn't do it, is to wax the ends of all of your logs. 
Um, I did not need that here. And Field and Forest said, if maybe if you live in a really um, dry climate for most of the year, you don't get rain, there's no humidity in the atmosphere, then maybe you would want to consider doing that just to keep that moisture in the log. But they said for them, they haven't noticed a big difference. So it kind of ends up being a waste of wax. So you can try that out yourself. So as you can see with a pretty simple setup, you can get a lot done. And I think the ideal would be to have four people help you one person is drilling the holes, two people are using an inoculation tool, and then one person is waxing it all. I think if you did that, you could probably pump out a hundred in a day pretty easily and also have a lot of fun doing it with your friends and family. Now, what if you don't have any trees that you can use on your property or you just have a small backyard, but you still want to do this? Well, I would look for or reach out to your local area on Facebook and uh, you may have some friends or neighbors, people that actually have some trees that they want cut down on their property, or they wouldn't mind if you thinned their woods a bit because uh, it's all overgrown and they don't want to deal with it. So basically offer chainsaw service for free and say, hey, I'll come clean up your, uh, your oaks uh, if you let me take the wood away. Depending on how much spawn that you get in the tools, for like around 150 bucks, something like that, you could you could do 50 logs so it's pretty awesome the the low cost to the uh, high output you know you can sell organic mushrooms for i don't know eight dollars a pound or even even more and this is the most organic way to do it a lot of commercial setups they grow indoors in plastic within sawdust um, and they inoculate into that which is fine but this is the ultimate this is the truest best way to do it you're also incorporating forestry management, making the trees healthier, taking out unhealthy trees, and then utilizing them for a really good purpose. Um, so yeah, growing in a hardwood is like, in my opinion, the best way to eat and to grow these mushrooms. So that's why this is so powerful.